This week on Healthy Living, the right to quality health for all is discussed on World Health Day. Dr. Taiwo Oyelade, Technical Officer for WHO African Regional Office, discusses strategies to ensure quality health care for all. And experts say the world is facing a growing global water crisis. Plus, did you know that drinking water may reduce your incidence of a heart attack? That's in this edition of Healthy Living. Hello, I'm Lina Mudu. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Healthy Living. More than 4.5 billion people in the world did not have access to health services in 2021, including 600 million in Africa, according to the World Health Organization. Issues such as non-communicable diseases, mental health disorders, and maternal mortality continue to claim lives disproportionately in marginalized community. World Health Day was commemorated on April 7th with the theme, My Health, My Right. Experts say everyone everywhere should have access to health services without suffering financial hardship. In Nigeria, six out of every 10 citizens lack access to quality primary health care services, according to the National Primary Health Care Development Agency. The authorities established a national health insurance scheme in 1999 to address the issue, but challenges remain. Jamima Adamu's 12-year-old daughter was diagnosed with cerebral palsy of the age of two. The condition affected her movement and because Adamu could not afford the treatment, her daughter got worse. She started walking with the toes of her legs, of the, the tips of her, this thing. So now went to the hospital, they say it's liberal palsy. So we started physiotherapy around 2014. So we did like for six months, but because of money, I was not having money to continue. So we stopped. In 2019, a good Samaritan paid for a tendon release procedure for Adamu's daughter. But the relief was short lived. Recently, she came down with peptic ulcer, and again, there's not enough money to treat her. Me, I don't have money to go further. Let me say, okay, I'll go and run tests to know why she's still running this thing. At least by today, she's supposed to be better than, stronger than before now, but she's still feeling weak. The World Health Organization says Nigeria has the highest out-of-pocket spending share on healthcare in sub-Saharan Africa. Healthcare spending accounts for 74% of household expenditures. The gap is even wider in the rural areas where people like Ademo struggle to survive. Regardless of your socioeconomic status, you should be able to have access to good healthcare without paying through your news. And that's why we say the second one is reducing financial hardship. Now, I will call it catastrophic medical expenditure in health. Nigeria launched a national health insurance scheme in 2005 to address this problem and ensure universal coverage for all. But nearly two decades later, less than 5% of citizens are covered under the program. Some experts say limited government investment and corruption have hindered efforts to improve healthcare delivery to Nigerians. But we were able to see how we can fight corruption, take care of his security, improve the industry and so on and so forth. Whether of these things are politically taken care of, they will be able to increase and improve our budgetary allocation to healthcare. Only about 5% share of the 2024 national budget was allotted to healthcare short of the 15% yearly target set by African Union in 2001. Nigeria is also struggling to control an exodus of medical practitioners leaving the country in search of better opportunities. As the world marked World Health Day, Nigerian authorities pledged to improve healthcare, giving hope to people like Adamu. Timothy Obiezu, VOA News, Abuja, Nigeria. 
Dr. Taiwo Oyelade is Technical Officer for Gender, Equity and Human Rights at the WHO African Regional Office. He discusses the importance of ensuring that everyone everywhere has access to essential health services without discrimination. We know that uh, you know, millions of uh, vulnerable and disadvantaged people uh, do not have uh, access to uh, good quality health care. So for this year's World Health Day, the theme, My Health, My Right, was chosen to, to champion the right of everyone everywhere, including uh, good housing, clean water, uh, energy, uh, security, education, and so on and so forth. Inability to, you know, to have sufficient data that will allow us to know those who are actually left behind. The inability of people to, you know, to be aware of their right to help. Uh, individuals and communities have a very uh, important role to play in order to, you know, create awareness and to build capacity for people to uh, demand right to help. Policymakers, uh, they, they have a uh, most important role to play in that regard. Uh, one, the, I've taken the first bold step by assenting to the, you know, the treaties and the conventions uh, which are related to right to health. So they have to go a step further. A lot of countries are already doing that. As you are aware, WHO's uh, uh, constitution, uh, you know, specifically stated uh, that everyone, every, everywhere, should have rights to, you know, quality health care, irrespective of their race, their religion, their class, their socioeconomic status. So, this is in line with the, you know, uh, Universal Declaration of uh, Human Rights, which has uh, highlighted the right to health. And uh, in this regard, WHO. Uh, is integrating the human rights based approach to health uh, within its uh, support to, to member states. What do you consider your health rights? What changes or improvements would you like to see in healthcare systems in your community to ensure that your right and everyone's right to quality health is attained? Here are some reactions from Abuja, Nigeria. First of all, um, the right to good food, the right to a very good environment, the right to a mental health, and most importantly, um, because all this thing boils down to a good health. I was privileged to you know, visit the hospital two times. Once I took somebody to the hospital, then secondly, I went for a checkup when I discovered that I saw some changes, and I would tell you that I wasn't happy with the medical services. As a citizen, uh, what I should consider at my Earth right is to have a proper diet and also we should ensure that in the community the people there is synthesized in such a way to maintain hygienic uh, you know environment my health right is my right as a human being concerning my health my privacy to medical attention to my health and my privacy, I cannot be subjected to any medical experimentation without my consent. I cannot be subjected to medical treatment without my consent. And also my health right, I can eat healthy and stay healthy. I would actually like the government to make provision for some facility in the medical sector yeah, to at least make people stay healthy. Definitely, I want a situation whereby I will be able to you know, eat healthy. Um, probably, you know, have space where I can be able to exercise myself with different uh, exercises. At least uh, that will enable me to keep fit and be much, much healthier. And secondly, probably have access to good water. Uh, starting from household, definitely, because we need to uh, keep our uh, house very clean to avoid... Uh, typhoid or uh, probably bringing mosquitoes or enabling uh, cockroaches around the house. 
And there is a growing risk of conflict over water resources as climate change takes hold, according to the United Nations. The aid agency Oxfam accuses global corporations of grabbing water from poorer countries to boost profits. Henry Ridgewell reports from London. In Johannesburg, South Africa, the taps are running dry. The city has seen a collapse of its water system, affecting millions of people. In Soweto, on the outskirts of the city, thousands line up to collect water from tankers every day. It has been a serious challenge, a very challenging time for my age, that I have to be here carrying these 20 litre buckets. And the sad thing is that we don't know when our tap's going to be wet again. Crumbling infrastructure is partly to blame, but scientists say climate change is causing rivers and reservoirs to dry up in South Africa and many other parts of the world. It's estimated that 2.2 billion people live without safely managed drinking water. UN scientists say roughly half of the world's population is experiencing severe water scarcity for at least part of the year, with poorer nations in the global south or developing countries the most affected. In a new report, the aid agency Oxfam accuses major global corporations of grabbing and polluting vital water resources at the expense of local populations in order to make profits. Water is overused by northern countries and is depriving southern countries from, uh, from access to water. Oxfam accuses richer countries and multinationals of shifting water pressure to poorer regions by extracting water from natural sources for industrial or agricultural use and through the import of water-intensive products like fruit, vegetables, meat, flowers and bottled water. The report says agriculture accounts for 70% of water withdrawals, including through irrigation systems to support the meat industry and biofuels. But Oxfam's analysis suggests the private sector is failing to reduce its impact on water resources. 350 corporations that have been analysed through that database, uh, which counts for like half of the uh, world agricultural revenue, only one of the four of them are declaring they are reducing water use and pollution. The UN is warning this year of the growing risk of conflict over water. It says that as nations manage climate change, mass migration and political unrest, they must put water cooperation at the heart of their plans. Henry Ridgewell, VOA News, London. Did you know that drinking five glasses of water may reduce your chance of having a heart attack? That's according to scientists at the U.S. National Institutes of Health, NIH. A study conducted by the researchers at NIH found that drinking at least 40 ounces of water daily can cut the risk of dying from a heart attack by 41% for women and 54% for men. The researchers say being adequately hydrated helps to lower sodium levels, which is a precursor to heart failure. If you are concerned about your weight, get this. Enjoying some sunshine in the morning may help you lose weight. A study by Northwestern University found that participants who were exposed to light early in the day had a lower body mass index, or BMI, a measure of body fat based on height and weight. The researchers accounted for activity level, caloric intake, sleep timing, age or season. They believe about 20 to 30 minutes in the mornings between 8 a.m. and 12 p.m. is all it should take to affect your weight positively. That's our show for today. For more health news, wellness tips, and medical breakthroughs, stay connected to Voice of America at voaafrica.com. You can follow me on X at Linoch Mudu. Until next time, stay well and strive to make every day a healthy day.